Okay, we talked about your love for proving that something is impossible. So there's quite a few still open problems and complexity of algorithms. Uh, so let me ask, does P equal NP? Probably you, not. Probably not. If P equals NP, what kind of, you know, and you'd be really surprised somebody proves it. Yeah. What would that proof look like? And why would that even be, what would that mean? What would that proof look like? In what possible universe could P equals NP? Is there I mean, something insightful you could say there? It could it could be true. And I mean, I'm not a complexity theorist, but every complexity theorist I know is convinced they're not equal and are basically not working on it anymore. I mean, there is a million dollars at stake if you can if you can solve the proof. It's one of the Millennium Prizes. The, okay, so here here's how I think the P not equals NP proof is going to eventually happen. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to fall out, and it's going to be not super simple. But not as hard as people think, because my 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 theory about a lot of theoretical computer science based on just some results I've done, so this is a huge extrapolation, is that a lot of what we're doing is just obfuscating deeper mathematics. Mm -hmm. So like this happens to me a lot, not a lot, but it's happened to me a few times in my work where you know, we obfuscate it because we say, well, there's an algorithm and it has this much you know memory and they're connected on a network and okay, here's our setup and now we're trying to see how fast it can solve a problem. And people do bounds about it. And then the end, it turns out that like we were just obfuscating some underlying, you know, uh, mathematical thing that already existed. Right. So this has happened to me. I, I had this paper I was quite fond of a while ago. It was looking at this problem called contention resolution, where you 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 put an unknown set of people on a shared channel and they're trying to break symmetry. So mm -hmm. it's like an Ethernet, whatever. Only one person can use it at a time. You try to break symmetry. There's all these bounds people have proven over the years about how long it takes to do this, right? And like I discovered at some point, there's this one combinatorial result from the early 1990s. All of these lower bound proofs all come from this. And in fact, it improved a lot of them and simplified a lot. You could put it all in one paper, mm -hmm. you know? It's like, wow. are we really? And then, okay, so this new paper that I, I submitted a couple of weeks ago, I found you could take some of these same lower bound proofs for this contention resolution problem. You could reprove them using Shannon's source code theorem. That actually, when you're breaking contention, what you're really doing is building a code over, uh, you know, uh, if you have a distribution on the network sizes, it's a code over that source. And if you plug in a high entropy information source and plug in from 1948, the source code theorem that says on a noiseless channel, you can't send things uh, at a faster rate than the entropy allows, the exact same lower bounds fall back out again, right? So like wow. this type of thing happens. There's, a, there's some famous lower bounds and distributed algorithms that turned out to all be algebraic topology underneath the covers mm -hmm. and uh, they won the girdle prize for working on that so my sense is what's going to happen is at some point someone really smart to be very exciting is going to realize there's some sort of other representation of what's going on with these turing machines trying to sort of efficiently and compute it'll actually fall out of that and there'll be an existing mathematical result that apply someone or yeah. something i guess it could be it, ai uh, theorem provers kind of thing it could be yeah i mean not a well yeah I mean, there's theorem provers, like what that means now, which is not fun. Uh, it's just a bunch of uh, very carefully formulated postulates that, but I take your point. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, you know, on, on a small tangent, and then, then you're kind of implying that mathematics, it, it almost feels like a kind of weird evolutionary tree that ultimately leads back to some kind of ancestral, a few fundamental ideas that all are just like, they're all somehow connected. Uh, in that sense, do you think uh, math is fundamental to our universe and we're just like slowly trying to understand th these patterns or is, is, is it is it discovered or is it just a, a little game that we play yeah. uh, uh, amongst ourselves to try to yeah. fit little patterns to the world? Yeah, that's the question, right? That's the physicist question. I mean, I'm probably, I'm in the discovered camp but I don't do theoretical physics, so I know they have a they they feel, feel like they have a stronger claim to, to answering that question. But so everything you don't comes back to it. Everything comes back to it. I mean, all of physics comes. The, the fact that the universe is well, okay, it's a complicated question. So how how often do you think how deeply does this result describe the fundamental reality of nature? So the the. The reason I hesitated, the, the, because it's something I'm, I taught this seminar and did a little work 
and what are called biological algorithms. Nice. So there's this notion cool. of so physicists used mathematics to explain the universe, right? And it was unreasonable that mathematics works so well. You know, all these differential equations, why does that explain all we need to know about thermodynamics and gravity and all the all these type of things? Well, there's this there's this movement within the intersection of computer science and biology. Uh, this is kind of Wolframium, I guess, really, yeah. that uh algorithms can be very explanatory, right? That like if you're trying to if you're trying to explain parsimoniously something about like an ant colony or something like this, you're not going to, ultimately it's not going to be explained as a equation, like a physics equation. It's going to be explained by an algorithm. So like this algorithm run distributedly is going to explain the behavior. So that's mathematical, but not quite mathematical, but it is, if you think about an algorithm, like a Lambda calculus, which brings you back to the, the world of mathematics. So I'm thinking out loud here, but basically abstract math is sort of like unreasonably effective at explaining a lot of things. And that's just what I feel like I glimpse. I'm not a um, not like a super well-known theoretician. I don't have really famous results. So even as a sort of middling, you know, career theoretician, I keep encountering this where we think we're solving some problem about computers and algorithms. And it's some much deeper underlying math. It's Shannon, but Shannon is entropy, but entropy was really, you know, goes all the way back to whatever it was, Boyle, or all the way back to looking at the early physics. And and it's, anyways, to me, I think it's amazing. Yeah, I mean, it, but it could be, the flip side of that could be just our brains draw so much pleasure from the uh, deriving generalized theories and simplifying the universe that we just naturally see that kind of simplicity in everything. Yeah, so that's the whole, you know, Newton to Einstein, right? Yeah. So you can you can say this must be right because it's so predictive. Well, it's not quite predictive because Mercury wobbles a little bit, but I think we have it set. And then you turn out, no, Einstein. And then and then you get Bohr, like, no, not Einstein. It's actually statistical. And yeah, so that would well, say- it's, it's, it's hard to also know like where smooth analysis fits into all that, where a little bit of noise, like you can say something very clean about a system and then a little bit of noise, like the average case is actually very different. And so, yeah. I mean, that's where like the quantum mechanics comes in. It's like, ugh, why does it have to be randomness in this? Yeah, I would have to do this complex statistics. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so to be determined. Yeah, that, that'll be my next book. That'd be ambitious. <laughs> the fundamental, <laughs> The fundamental core of reality, comma, and some advice for being more productive at work. <laughs> 